<laughs> this is very therapeutic. Okay, so right off the bat, one, nothing is broken, yay! Two, there is a lot less paper in this one um, than in the other two kits. The other kits, right, Ty? I mean, those are filled with packing paper. Yeah, it looks like this one doesn't have as much. So this one definitely does not have as much packing paper, so I don't think we'll be going through as many of the big trash bags. <laughs> There's all these um, support beams here on the top and also holding down the cabin cover. So they have these screws here holding all those in. And so I think that's where we're gonna start is by um, taking these out to then try to lift the cabin cover out. And then, then we'll see, cause it's kind of deep in there. Uh, so we might end up taking one of the sides off after that. You can see here, this is one of the Longerons and it's bent just a little bit, but from everything we've read, that's how they ship it. It's not supposed to be any sort of a problem. That's just how they put it in here. And it, it, it's not like it damages it or does anything bad to it. So it's just the way that it fits for shipping. Andy, not the hot rocks. Ah wow. Holy cow, man. That's really, like, seeing it out here, I mean, that's big. So now this is what we're left with, so we're going to try and knock out this side. Oh boy, and probably the one little box of hardware there that it talks about. <laughs> Let's see what's inside. I mean, 
mean, there's that. See the finger? That is not a lot of space there. This is. Look. Where is this gonna go? Good gracious! This is gonna be exciting. This is 1072, and it's got the same thing on that side. Forward, use bottom skin. Wait till you see these holes here. So look at this. Look here. It's on both sides. Here, look at this. Is that the bottom skin, right? It sure is. Well, that's the back. This is the front. I think that's where the lady here goes. Oh! I wonder how big that is. finished pulling all of those big skins out we went ahead and moved all of them into the other garage where we have the big rack that we keep them stored on and that gave us all of that space there in the garage to now go through the other box that was inside the crate to start going through all of those pieces and skins and there were quite a bit um, they're also particularly sharp <laughs> all of the pieces seem to be much sharper so just be careful fortunately I only gored myself once in the shin but just keep that in mind um, most of it was all organized into sub kits. I think there was a couple loose pieces, but pretty much everything in there was in sub kits, and so we were trying to keep it all sorted and organized and um, keep it together to make it easier than when we get to the build part and we have to go and get everything from the same sub kit. So, um, as you've seen, I'm sure by now, we have the little plastic bins that I just got for cheap, and uh, I'll take the parts from a different sub kit or two and I'll put them all into a bin to just help keep track of them and then to not have to take too much time up while I'm doing everything, I'll normally just cut the label that was wrapped around that sub kit and on the, uh, the little plastic wrap and I'll just throw it in the bin because then I can go back afterwards and pull it out and I can put some painter's tape and write the, uh, write the number down for the sub kit on the bin. And sometimes again, I'll put two in there. It depends on the pieces and everything. It just it's just to help keep it organized. If I can at least keep it down to two sub kits, if not one, it, it helps make it easier afterwards. But uh, it did take up quite a lot of space. The nice thing was those little floor tiles, I don't know if you see, they're padded. It was nice not only to sit on, but also then to help um, put all different parts on so it wasn't just getting scratched on the floor of the garage there. Uh, I did run out of uh, those. I didn't bring enough into the garage, so I ended up just using some of the paper that was from the box to help um, keep it safe. But yeah just went through all of that stuff again it was a lot a lot of inventory i think it's 14 pages and the big thing too is there's a lot of pieces that are nested within pieces like i don't know if you can see here there you really need to make sure to go through and check everything because there's parts within parts within parts and just to make sure that you you get it all out there so um but it was it was quite a lot of inventory to go through i think this was the longest um, one we did all in all it took us i think nine hours um, from when we started opening up the crate to here where we are now where we've gotten everything at least out of the one big box but you see we didn't start with the the other two yet that evening the following night we went and took the other two boxes that were in the crate inside the house the larger one which was lighter had mostly a lot of powder coated pieces that we went through the smaller one was in fact all of the hardware which was lots and lots and lots of rivets and bolts and washers and whatnot that we had to go through and count um, for the inventory. One thing that was really kind of clever that Tyler came up with this time to go through with the washers was to go and get a chopstick and he would pour a bunch of the washers in his hand, kind of rifle through them with the, the chopstick and get a bunch of them stacked up onto the stick so that then he could go and take them off the end of the chopstick and stack them up kind of like a dealer would do in Vegas with a bunch of chips but at least it made it easy to then just make stacks of 10 because when you're having to count I think it was like 330 washers anything you can do to make your life a little bit easier and help it go a little bit faster is a bonus so there you have it that was the unboxing of our fuselage kit it took three days to go through everything the first day you saw at the beginning of the video with all of the bigger parts and the skins um, and going through the sub kits. And then the second day we went through the smaller box that was in there that had a lot of the powder coated items in it. And we started going through the hardware. And then the third day to finish up the last bit of the hardware that we weren't able to finish on the second day. So compared to the, uh, the other two kits, 
This one definitely took longer to go through. I think there were more little pieces, more little parts. Um, thinking about like with the wing kit and with the emp kit having a lot more big skins, ribs, not a lot of, there, there were some parts we found, I mean, that they are very tiny. So I think you're getting into maybe more detailed stuff here in the fuselage. And I think perhaps then that's why it took longer. Um, the hardware was all in a box this time. And in both the M kit and the tail cone kit, it just came in like a big plastic bag. So there was definitely more, um, yeah, lots of the different bolts and everything. So that, that I think is the big difference. It does take, at least for us, it did take more time to go through everything, but, um, we're excited. So now we have the fuselage kit inventoried and everything. It's great. You can see here the, uh, the cabin cover has its temporary new home <laughs> in our dining room with the tail cone and the uh, horizontal stabilizer. So my house is definitely my hanger. <laughs> Don't forget to check out the details for the giveaway that I'm doing. All of the details are in the previous video that I put out with this summary of everything from um, the fuselage delivery. I'm gonna be giving away two Play Lady shirts so you can get like this one. You get to pick whichever design you want, color, uh, size from any of the available options. And all the details, again, they're gonna be in the previous video. So make sure to go and check that out. The deadline is this Friday at midnight. So. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so for more videos like this and to follow along as we build our RV10.